Okay, this is a documentation, a video documentation of a helium bomb cap miner 300 that is unable to be paired via Bluetooth and some network diagnostics that I did to confirm its condition so that I could report it back to the open ticket. A open ticket was generated with helium because of this issue where there is an error that when you try to pair, it fails and says that the hotspot miner is unable to respond to requests. Please reboot the hotspot and try again later. This is something that continues to happen regardless of which phone is tried. Three iPhones have been tried to pair to this unit, all unsuccessful, even though it advertises itself and our phones can see it. A ticket has been opened up with Bobcat and a canned response was given, rerouting the end user to go to this link, which will, as a matter of fact, I have it open, which goes into running a diagnoser. And to run the diagnoser, you need to have a machine that's connected directly on the same subnet as to where the Bobcat miner resides. It says it right here that while a key feature of this diagnoser is that it does not require Bluetooth, it is a local diagnoser, which means that it has to be on the same LAN as the hotspot to access the web interface. The hotspot must be online to access di diagnoser as the page will not load if your hotspot is offline. Lastly, while the diagnoser can be viewed using any browser, we recommend you use either Firefox or Chrome as they make the JSON files very easy to read. So we will go ahead and try to see if that works because the user has tried that and they are unsuccessful. As a matter of fact, right here, the IP address of the Bobcat miner was identified. It is able to reply back to pings, but yet you cannot pull it up on a browser. So to begin that troubleshooting process, we have a team viewer session to a box that um, is on the same subnet as the Bobcat miner. But before we get into that, let me show you my visual diagram that I will walk you through so that you can see a landscape of what this thing looks like as far as its wiring. So starting with the iPhone Helium app down here, demonstration, Bluetooth Bobcat miner, we're seeing that error. At this point, the Bobcat miner is connected to a Cisco switch and is on a VLAN that has given it an IP address of 252.47. And my side box, which has the Wireshark packet capture software installed on it, is also on the same subnet with a 1.2.168.252.141 address. The Wireshark server will be capturing any traffic going to or from the Bobcat miner off of port six over to port seven where it'll capture that. And we'll be able to see what types of traffic uh, is happening when the Bobcat miner gets plugged in. This goes to a Cisco firewall. The Cisco firewall is the one that has the translation up in this box on demo two. We can see the DHCP settings and we can see that the Bobcat miner picked up a uh, 102.168.252.47 with its MAC address of one ending in 1E77, which we can see off of the tag behind the Bobcat miner that is the MAC address of the unit. From um, the firewall's perspective, this has already been confirmed, and I'll go ahead and show you as far as the configurations for this thing and the IP address that's already been assigned. So we can clearly see here that the MAC address ending with 1E77 has picked up a 252.147 address. And that we can actually ping that from the inside interface. And we are getting a response. So the Bobcat miner is active and is communicating to the internet as will be proven in one second. At this point, we're gonna switch over to the box that's on the same network and I will show you that it has a 252.141. So if I try to ping 
sorry. I'm getting a response. And if I try to tell net, the listening port is open and I can connect to the Bobcat miner on that specific port. Um, we can also do a port scan up against the Bobcat miner and see what ports are open up. And I'm going to include at the end of this thing 44158 just to confirm that it is open. And any of these other things are just random, typically well known use ports. So let's just go ahead and scan for all of them. And you can see that uh, SSH is enabled, but that port 80 is closed. And that 44158 is open as I asked for it to be scanned and it's showing that it's open. Now this SSH is very interesting. So I figured, well, maybe I need to browse the diagnoser via SSH. So I go to a browser and I get nothing. And if I then type in HTTPS, I get nothing. So at this point, being that port 22 is open, let's try to use PuTTY. Right, PuTTY. Let's bring PuTTY up. There it is. And using SSH, we'll try to connect to the uh, miner and let's see what happens. Yep, want to accept. And now we are prompted for a user and password. Now I've tried admin, admin, that doesn't work. I heard trying Bobcat and then minor. But then I've read, people have said, this is private information, only exclusive to the developers of Bobcat miners. But this is just to indicate that it is talking to it. I am being prompted to communicate to it. The port is listening. So at this point, let's go ahead and show you this. I'm going to go ahead and ping the Bobcat miner with a slash T for continuous. And I'm going to, I'm going to unplug the uh, Bobcat miner's Ethernet interface so that you can see this thing stop responding. And it is unplugged right now. And then I'm going to launch a wire truck server. Now this is going to capture all the packets and I'm going to specify the port that I know is part of that. So we'll click on Ethernet 3. And as of right now, there is no data being captured on it because it's unplugged. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect it. <clears throat> And as soon as I do that, you can see the device is responding. Wireshark server is showing communication. Uh, if I specify that I want to see traffic just on the Bobcat miner, you can see all different types of conversations happening from the Bobcat miner out to these IPs. And if I stop this, you can see that it is using port 44158 to talk to these different sources. And there's plenty. Okay. So while this thing is running, I can now confirm, can I talk to this Bobcat miner from an external source? So I have a remote session to my home box here, and I am using Comcast, and this is my external IP address, 98.222.11878. And being that I have a translation from the Bobcat miner to the external IP address of 12.226.125.132, this is gonna confirm that NAT translation is happening in port forwarding. Hit enter and boom, it's tapping into the listening port of the Bobcat miner. 
So at this point, it makes no sense to me as to why this unit is not working correctly as far as pairing it via Bluetooth when everything else seems to be working just fine. We also see that port 80 is not open, so I don't see how a browser would ever come up. And um, the forums on the internet, uh, on Reddit specifically, in terms of unable to pair via Bluetooth, certain commenters have commented that contacting Bobcat and having them push a firmware directly to the device over the internet has fixed their issues. I just want to know if that is the case for everybody. I hope this has been very useful to you and uh, thanks for viewing.